So how do we set that up? Okay? We're going to set that up by getting the controller and the view on screen at the same time. Okay? And then we're going to wire it up graphically with the mouse. So let's get them both on there at the same time. The way we do that is with this button right here, this little round circle, the assistant editor. This brings up the controller and the view on screen at the same time. Again, I have low resolution, so it's all kind of smashed. So let's close our navigator and close our utilities. Okay? And we can share this space however we want. Okay? So we have plenty of room for our code. And here's our controller. So now this is going to seem wacky, but it's actually really, really cool. Okay? The way that we hook up that button to call a method in our controller is by holding down the control key. Okay? I'm going to hold down the control key and drag from the button into my code. Okay? Now it really seems weird, but it's cool. Okay? So I can put it wherever I want in my class here. And when I let go, it's going to say, okay, what kind of connection do you want to make between this user interface object and your controller? And there's really two choices. One is called an outlet, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. And the other one is called an action. So an action is when you want something that happens in the UI to invoke a method in your controller. Okay? Exactly what we want here. That's what an action is. So here it's asking the name. It wants to know the name of the method. So here I'm touching a digit button, so I'm going to call this touch digit. Okay? So this is just the name of the method that is going to be created in my controller. Um, notice that my method can have arguments. You see down here where it says arguments? It could have no arguments, okay? which is fine. right? I don't want an argument. That'd be fine. It can have one argument, which is the sender. In other words, the button that is sending me this method. Okay? That's really valuable argument, okay? especially in this case because I'm going to have a whole bunch of buttons. They're each going to be sending touch digit, and I want to know which one sent it to me. So the fact that it's going to pass itself as an argument to this method is great. The only problem is if you see this type right here, any object, that's going to be the type of the object. It's this generic any object thing right here. We don't want that. Okay? So when you're doing your homework, don't miss this step. Okay? Change this from any object to UI button. Because of course the thing sending us this message is a UI button. It's unfortunate that this is not the default, but you must do this, okay? So this, I'm going to hit connect. Uh, this is just what event is causing this, a touch on the button that goes up inside the button's bounds, okay? Um, so I'm going to hit connect right here, and it's going to write the code for a method. You're going to see your first Swift method. Here we go, okay? This is your first Swift method. Now, this is actually not part of Swift, okay? It's not part of this method. This is something Xcode puts in here so that this little round circle appears. You see that round circle right there? If I mouse over that round circle, you see how it shows me what thing in my view is hooked up to this method, you see? Okay, so that's what this is. So that's really not part of a Swift method. Okay, so this is all the Swift method. Okay, so what is Swift method syntax? Func, okay? Func means this is a function on a class. A method is essentially a function on a class, right? I suppose this could be called method. I mean, my, like the breaking bad version of it would be called meth, maybe. But func is good. <laughs> func is good because you can have global funks also. Okay? You could have the same syntax outside of a class description, outside of these braces, and it would be a global function. And we're going to see some of those, like square root is a function I'm going to use when I add square root to my calculator. All right? So that's the keyword, just like class is the keyword for creating a class. Funk is the keyword for adding a method. Touch digit is the name, obviously, of this method. Parentheses has the arguments. Okay? We only have one argument called sender of type UI button. So that's what colon UI button means. Anytime you're defining a type of something in Swift, colon and the type after the name of the thing. Okay? And that's true for arguments to methods. It's also true for local variables, everything, colon and the type. Okay? Now, if we had more arguments, they would just be separated by comma, like other argument might be an int. Okay? So I put an int there. So this is another argument, second argument here. And I can have as many as I want, and they each have to have a keyword which describes uh, what they are. If this had a return value, it looks like this, returns string. Okay, or returns double, okay, something like that. That's how return looks like. Okay, now I'm going to take a time out here from writing our calculator and just show you what it looks like to call a method. 
Okay, this is we're declaring the method. What if I wanted to call this method on myself? Okay, it would be recursive here because I'm inside touch digit, but I just want to show you the syntax for calling, okay? So if I want to send something to myself, I use the keyword self, and then to send a message, just like Java, you press dot, okay? The thing you want to send it to, dot, and then you type the name of the method or of the property. If you want to access an instance variable, exactly the same. The name of the property or the method that you want to access in that object. So here, I want to do touch digit. You're going to notice here that Xcode is helping me a lot as I type. It's giving me lists of things uh, that I can choose that are likely. Uh, here, touch digit, it's putting that on the top because that's the only method that is in my class. I inherit a lot of methods from my super classes, but this is the one, only one in my class. And in fact, if I just press tab, it starts filling it out. I'm not even, I don't even have to type it, okay, because it knows that's what I want. Now, um, it takes two arguments. The first argument, you just put it in. So the first argument is a button, so maybe, you know, some button or something like that, okay, some variable that would have to be a button. I don't have one, but that's what it would be. The second argument here, okay, and I'm just hitting tab to go to each argument, uh, is an int, so let's say I put five, Okay, so this is how I would call this thing. Now what's interesting about this is notice that this keyword is actually included. In other languages, this would look like this, right? You would just have the two arguments, sender and argument. But here in Swift, sorry, in Swift, we put the explicit uh, name of the argument here for readability and clarity, except for we don't do it with the first one, okay? The first one we don't do. That's because usually the first one is implicit in the name, okay? Uh, but uh, that's what, now there is a way to make it so you have to do the first one, uh, for, but generally we don't. In other words, we don't type sender this. And in fact, it's wrong to type sender that. Would that be an error? It would be an error. It would not compile. Okay? So that's the syntax for sending. And you'll have to get used to putting these in for all the subsequent arguments besides the first. Okay, so let's get rid of all this stuff we added. So here's our touch digit. Let's just have touch digit print something out to the console. Okay, great thing to know for debugging and stuff like that. You do that with the method print, and I'm just going to say print touch digit. So it's going to print touch digit out to the console. Notice no semicolons on the end of lines or anything like that uh, in Swift. The carriage return is the end of line. If you want to put two statements on the same line, you can use a semicolon in between, but generally the carriage return is the end of line. Okay? So we print touch digit here. Let's go ahead and run and see if that works. Okay, here's our simulator. Now, where is the console? It's going to appear magically at the bottom here as soon as something appears on the console. So here we go, ready? Five, there it is. There's the console on here. Five again. Okay, we got two of them. Okay, we press a whole bunch of times and get a whole bunch of them. Go back here, scroll around. This bottom area has the console on the right and your debugger output on the left. This is where when we start doing debugging, you'll see on the left. You can hide one or the other, like we could hide our um, debugger and just see our console here. Okay, so this is cool, this is great, except for we're gonna have a lot of buttons, not just this one button, this five, okay? 